Thomas Keegan, host of LibertarianProgressive.com and also BlogTalkRadio.com forward slash election channel. LibertarianProgressive.com uh, is an independent media organization. We interview independent and third party candidates who are on the ballots, Green Party, independents, libertarians, no party affiliation, and other parties. We believe if a candidate has gathered enough signatures to be on the ballot and has a statistical chance to win, then a responsible media will include them in the debates and interview them to educate and inform the public of their options. Tonight, we are interviewing Pepper Snyder, who is a libertarian candidate for the U.S. House in District 3 uh, in Indiana. And so you can find out more information at pepper 4 forcongresscom uh, And at Pepper, uh, good evening. And I believe that you are the only third-party option for your district this year. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct, yes. Great. Well, good to talk to you this evening. And uh, so let me ask you, um, how come you're running as a libertarian? I do see on your website it says, imagine if a libertarian worked here. There's 435 members in the House, another 100 in the Senate. Um, what would that be like if a libertarian worked there? Well, I think that... Um, that I think that we, we probably need a whole lot more than just one libertarian working there to get anything um, fixed in the, the system that we have right now. The reason that I decided to run, I've, I've spent several years um, angry at the political system, I'm angry at, at the fact that I could vote for someone and they don't do the things that they said they would do. And I had almost given up, and I had, I, you know, after what the Republican Party did to Ron Paul, I had just pretty much thrown my hands up. It just seemed pretty worthless to even get involved in it. And then, it, it, you know, people kept saying, well, someone needs to do something. Someone needs to do something. And I, I decided I was someone. And I, I have to throw my hat into the ring and, and see if I could make a change and, and decrease government, decrease spending, um, give power back to people. Great. And is this your first time running for um, government office? This is my first time running for anything, yes. All right. Well, and I maybe I should say congratulations, and, and congratulations <laughs> also if, if, if you win. And you are giving people another option, and you are the only third-party candidate in your district. Uh, have you been in any, in any of the debates? Have there been debates? And are there any upcoming debates? For your districts, there have not been any debates, and from what I understand, there will not be any debates. We're in an interesting situation in my district. Um, we have a Republican who um, he's a pretty well-known Republican, and Jim Banks, and then we also have a Democrat who people thought they were electing a well-known Democrat in the area, who turned out to not be that well-known Democrat. He. Um, the Democrat, his name is Tommy Schrader. He lived in a hotel and he was drinking alcohol um, during his interview with the news and reading a Bible and watching porn. And I believe he endorsed Trump. Um, so the Democrat Party in the third district has pretty much um, disowned their candidate. Um, and so it's really kind of a, a race between the Republican Party and the Libertarian Party. And so the Libertarian Party, of course, we jumped on that, and we're, we're hoping to get a pretty good turnout in that situation. But, but it is a unique situation in, in the 3rd District right now. Now, are you willing to do any debates? Like if you were invited to one, two, three, there's 40 days left until Election Day. Mm -hmm. um, are, are you willing to debate uh, the Republican at least? Absolutely. Uh, they have done debates in the past. Um, from what I understand, they're not doing one this year because they said that they haven't had a very good turnout on the um, um, channel that they do it, and so they've decided not to do it this year. Uh, maybe if they have a credible Democrat next time, maybe they will do it then, but right now I, they're saying they're not going to do one. Okay, and I don't mean to press on this issue, but it's just surprising, even if the Democrat's not in there, that at least you and the Republican mm -hmm. wouldn't be um, debating. Uh, have you um, challenged him to a debate publicly? Um, some people in my campaign have, and um, other people who um, follow politics in the area have challenged 
both of us to a debate. Um, it's, it's just the problem of getting um, someone to do it for us, I think. And he's not really responsive to it, from what I understand. So I, I don't know that it's going to happen, but we, we're very open to it. Now, let's just say the tables were turned, and two years from now, you happen to be the incumbent, and you have an up-and-coming challenger, um, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, would you be willing to debate them if the, you know, the situation was reversed? I, I, think, I think debates are very important. Whether, you know, I, I'm a, I like competition. I, I, don't, I don't want to uh, silence voices. People need to hear how I feel. People need to hear how he feels, what his plans are, what my plans are. And regardless of whether or not I'm on the winning team or the uphill battle team, I think people still have um, a right to hear their options. And Pepper Snyder, that's who we're talking with, uh, libertarian candidates in Indiana's 3rd District uh, this year for the U.S. House of Representatives. It basically is her versus a Republican in that district. There are no other third-party options. The Democrat seems like it's almost forfeited. So this could be an interesting race if uh, you're interested in U.S. politics. Um, I mean, we're going to get to the issues real quick on your website. And again, your website is pepper4forcongress.com. Um, actually, let's go to that right now. If I'll, I'll just read them off real quick, and you can expand on them. But you have the Second Amendment, government spending, jobs, non-interventionism, against the NSA Patriot Act, corporatism, immigration, um, and audit the Fed, criminal justice reform, medical cannabis, marriage equality. How about let's start with um, non-interventionism, and uh, you could uh, explain also that um, it says here you were in the Army as well. If you could explain what your vision is for uh, US, the U.S. foreign policy going forward um, as it should be. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't in the Army. My husband was. I was an Army wife. Um, oh, okay. My brother was in the Army. My sister was in the Army. My brother actually did several tours in Afghanistan and Iraq, and, and he came back with some pretty substantial PTSD and developed a heroin addiction. I um, have personal experience in, in seeing the um, tragedy that our, our foreign policy has caused, not only in soldiers' lives, but also in the lives of their families. Um, we are sending these, these men and women to die for other countries. We're sending them to lose their souls for other countries. And that's not fair. It's not right. And I, I have a huge problem with that. We should never, ever kill other people unless our direct national defense is at stake. And, and that is where I'm coming at from foreign policy. All right. And uh, that sounds good. And what about um, immigration? Uh, how would you approach uh, how the U.S.'s immigration policies should be as a representative um, in the U.S. House of Representatives? I, I want to make it easier to become a citizen in the United States. It shouldn't take 10, 15, I, I've, I've heard 20 years to, to stand in that line to get that, that citizenship. I, I think that's appalling. We've got um, mothers trying to get their children to a, a better situation in America out of um, drug, drug lord war zones in Mexico, and to, to tell them that they have to wait for 10 years, it, it's, it's appalling. And it's no wonder that people are coming across the border in droves. It's no wonder. It shouldn't take that long to become a citizen. That is a long time to wait. I mean, I sometimes I can imagine... It seems like a long time to wait. I mean, I can imagine sometimes even waiting for days or, or a year, and I can right. imagine 10 years. Um, and you also have here um, as an addendum to that um, uh, Muslims specifically. There's, that's been in the news lately. So uh, mm-hmm. you could should there be a sure. religious litmus test? Absolutely not. That um, stands in direct conflict with the Constitution of the United States. We have freedom of religion here, so I, I don't think it's um, right for us to then tell certain other religions that they can't come here. All right, so kind of like um, equal justice under the law, perhaps. Uh, Correct. And um, now, um, what about corporatism? This sounds like an issue that I've heard a lot about on the left, 
and the rights, um, if you want to use that kind of terminology left and right. But um, what about corporatism? I mean, are, are you against corporations or um, what is your stance? Oh, no. What's the, I'm not yeah. against corporations. I just don't think that government and taxpayers should prop them up. That's not the free market. I support a completely free market. I, I want Walmart to totally exist. I also want mom and pop shops to have the opportunity to exist alongside Walmart. Yeah, and what about small and mid-sized businesses? Um, you know, uh, what do you think the state of the union is, or the state of the small business owner is, uh, and mid-sized business owners? Um, are they? What can we do to help them out? I, I think that the first thing that we can do is cut the regulations. I think small businesses are regulated to death. They're regulated out of business half the time. Even to start a business, you've got to um, fork out a couple hundred thousand dollars just to get permission from the government to get it up and running. And I think that that's impossible. It hurts the poor. It hurts the middle class. These are the people that don't get that opportunity to go out and, and make a life for themselves because of government regulations. And I think that the first thing we need to do is cut those. And um, I think that if, if someone who is poor wants to slap a taxi cab sign on their car to make some extra money to make ends meet, they should be able to do that. But unfortunately, the taxi industry has um, set up this system where you cannot do that unless you purchase a medallion, which can sometimes cost quite a few pennies. Yeah, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, that's a lot. And, uh, yeah. you know, the... the not to throw out any, uh, we're not endorsing any other groups, but the, in, I think it's called the Institute of Justice. They do a lot of um, investigations on exactly what you're talking about, people needing licenses to start mm -hmm. a barber shop or, um, you know, hair braiding thing or, or et cetera. It's just amazing mm -hmm. how many regulations there 300, are. 300 hours of classes just to cut hair and some crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of time. I don't have that much time to uh, do that. And um, supposedly um, there's been a report that, you know, there's millions of jobs that are not being created because of those, some of those regulations. And it's, you know, they're not like, you know, in the realm of nuclear waste or anything like that. I mean, it, these are just things right. that, you know, um, what about um, government spending? Uh, you're not going to Washington to, um, to spend a lot of money or? <laughs> <laughs> no. In fact, um, a lot of uh, Republicans now, they, they, don't, they don't say they're going to cut spending. They're just going to stop it from increasing more. That seems to be the, the road that the Republicans are taking from now on. I, I want to cut it. I don't want, just want to cut the rate that it increases. I want to cut it, period. I want across the board spending cuts on everything, right. including and, and, defense. And so we're – and maybe that has something to do with the um, somewhere between 19 to 20 trillion dollar debt yeah. that we have right now. Um, A little bit, and, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about audit the Fed? Uh, you know, you mean the Federal Reserve? Um, and yes. yeah, if you could expand on that a little bit, please. Well, I think that is crazy that the the, the agency we've set out to that our monetary, monetary policy is not regulated in any way, shape, or form to make sure that they are doing a proper job of that and, and what's, what they're doing with all that money and gold. I think they were, they've been audited once in the last um, 100 years since they were created Especially, in 1913. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they have a lot of influence, uh, some would say. And now uh, let's combine two issues into one here. I mean, they are separate issues, but you have here criminal justice reform and medical cannabis. And please uh, mm -hmm. tell our audience um, what your stance is on that, how we should approach it, and what we've been doing wrong. Well, I think that we should approach laws and, and the way that and, and Black Lives Matter have, have brought up a, a very interesting point that I want to make. Um, if you're not willing to kill someone over a law, then it shouldn't be a law. I, I, I find it if there's no victim, there's, it shouldn't be a crime. We should not be ripping mom and dad away from kids and putting them in prison because they had an ounce too much of pot in their car. Um, it's a plant. It, it's appalling that we have... I mean, our Constitution is written on hemp for crying out loud, and we're throwing people in prison for having hemp in, growing in their home. 
And I, I, I really want to focus on changing the law so that you don't go to prison for personal choices that affect you and only you, and that we stop arresting people for their potential to commit a crime because they may be on drugs and might possibly do something while they're on drugs. And again, um, if people want to find out more information about um, Pepper Snyder, who we're interviewing right now, it's pepper4forcongress.com. Uh, she's running as a libertarian for the U.S. House of Representatives um, this year. She's going to be on the ballot uh, November 8th, about 40 days away, for Indiana's 3rd District, uh, again, for the U.S. House. Yeah, sometimes I, um, just to follow up on that a little bit, um, pe- some people might think uh, this or that might be illegal or should be illegal, and that's one opinion someone could have, but the real crux of the issue is what should be the consequences for that because that's really what they're advocating. And um, so it's not just one thing to say you think cannabis should be illegal. You're actually saying you think here's the consequences of it being illegal. And uh, so um, let's see here, the second amendment. Um, And so, you know, that's been in the news. What what do you think about the second amendment? And yeah, please go ahead. I'm I'm an advocate for the second amendment. Um, I I don't, and some people may disagree with this, but I don't support gun laws. Um, obviously, we do have gun laws. I don't think they work. If a criminal, someone wants to murder people with a gun, he's going to get a gun whether the government gives him permission. I mean, murder is against the law. That, does, that law does not seem to affect someone who wants to murder people. Uh, I don't think the only thing that gun laws do is slow down law-abiding citizens from from defending themselves. I mean, you have the story of a woman out of New Jersey who applied for a gun permit because she felt threatened by her ex-husband, and she was waiting two months for that gun permit, and he broke into her house and stabbed her to death while she was waiting for that gun permit to be approved so she could have a gun to defend herself. I, that's appalling. I don't understand how we... we we can claim to be for women's rights when we don't give women the right to defend themselves against men who are twice their size. And a gun is a perfect defense for that. I want to have the right to defend myself. I want my daughters to have the right to defend themselves. And I am opposed to anything that would slow them down from, from achieving that right. Sure. And I suppose I can understand someone saying that would be an equalizer if someone um, who is maybe smaller, more petite, but has a gun, you know, they would probably, you could make a strong argument, be able to defend themselves just as much as someone that might be, you know, 250 pounds and muscular and et cetera. Um, What about now? I think, um, you know, if people defend the Second Amendment, don't want any laws, that's great, but um, there should also be maybe some solutions to reducing gun violence, and maybe it's a holistic approach, but without getting rid of the Second Amendment. You think there's alternative ways we could poss- – and crime rates have been going down um, for the last couple of decades, but besides mm-hmm. that, what are some other outside-the-box, outside of tampering with the Second Amendment things that, that you think might – overall reduce gun violence in another way besides infringing on the Second Amendment? Well, I think one thing that we can do is is we used to train kids in school how to properly use a gun and and that they are dangerous. Uh, We we have kids that have never been around a gun, and then when they are around a gun, which can happen, they they don't know how dangerous it it is. They don't know how to handle a gun. And they don't know how serious the consequences can be if something goes wrong while they're handling that gun. I would like to see kids trained how to properly use a gun and gun safety. And I I wish we could get that back in the schools. It's obviously a very touchy issue right now. Um, As for gun violence, I think a lot of gun violence you see happening, happening in poverty areas. Obviously, it's economically Economic mm-hmm. issues lead to violence, and I think that, you know, they're libertarian in office and a, a few libertarians in office, and hopefully we can start changing things to um, take care of those economic issues for people. 
Great, great. And we appreciate you sharing all these issues. And um, you do have here marriage equality. Might as well also ask um, your stance on mm-hmm. the, you know, abortion issue as well. Okay. Marriage equality, I don't believe government has the right to tell two people who they can and can't marry, nor, nor do they have the right to tell a church who they can and can't marry. Um, I, government is not church. They're not our church. And so many politicians go into office thinking they're supposed to uphold the laws of the church. That's not their role. Um, as for abortion, I am pro-life. I don't think that government involvement in the issue will do anything other than adversely affect abortion. Abortion is decreasing. I believe that if government comes in and starts clamping down, you would see much like you would see you've seen with the drug war. It would probably start increasing. And so we have abortion decreasing. And so let's just keep educating people on, on abortion, on the rights of the unborn, on life. I get 4D ultrasound out there. Let, you know, if you truly want to help women who need help, who otherwise would not get an abortion, if someone would help them, then help them. Go out into your communities and offer assistance to both rights, to other organizations that truly help women get on their feet and not only get on their feet while they're pregnant, but stay on their feet after that baby is born. All right. And now let's ask some questions um, outside the platform that you have listed on your website here. Um, you're running as a, you know, what be known as a third party candidate. Um, you are on the ballot. And so you're just as on the ballot as anyone else. And, um, and even in your situation this year, as you stated, the Democrat is probably not really going to be taken seriously. So you might even, you know, uh, not be just the third choice, but rather the second or, or the first choice. Um, so reaching out to people, trying to get them to vote for a different party that they might not have, have done before, um, I think consensus might be a key word. And so, uh, you know, what are you trying to do to build consensus for your campaign to give you a chance to convince or make the argument that you're the best choice this year for Congress for a two-year term? I, I would say to those people that look, look what has happened. We have been voting for Democrats and Republicans for decades, and look what they've done. If we want something different, like we keep saying, we have to vote for something different. And so vote different. Quit giving them your vote. They're not going to do what they say. They're going to do the exact opposite of what they say. They're not there to serve you. They're there to serve Goldman Sachs. They're there to serve Blackwater. Uh, Halliburton. Those are the people they're serving. They're not serving you. We just had our her Senate vote to fund, to give weapons to Saudi Arabia. The country doesn't want to do that, but they did it anyway. They don't represent you. If you want something different, vote different. And let me ask you this. This might be a tough question here, but um, I what are the if you were to tell so, if someone was thinking pros and cons about electing you on November eighth? What are the pros and the cons? Uh, and, and you know you can answer this however you want to vote for Pepper Snyder for Congress this year. Well, I think the pros are definitely I'm going to um, do my best to get government out of every aspect of your life. And I think that cons for someone might be that you may not disagree that um, government should be out of that part of your life or out of that part of someone else's life, take marriage equality for one. Um, many people who are opposed to gays getting married would, would definitely support government stepping in and stopping those two people from getting married, but turn that table around and, and see how you would feel if government turned their eyes on you and decided that you and your spouse shouldn't be married. Um, what, what kind of role do we want to give government? And um, sure, that's how I would answer that. All right. And what about this question? Um, it's more of a philosophical question maybe. Um, is what matters more how the game is played or whether you win or lose? How the game is played. Okay. All right. Great. And uh, who are some of your favorites – people, um, past or present, elected or not? Definitely Ron Paul. Um, I I also um, learned a lot from Isabel Patterson. She uh, wrote a lot of literature, and I would suggest anyone check her out. I've learned a lot from her. 
All right. And are there any um, specific, like maybe local issues? I know you're running for the U.S. House, but any issues that are near and dear to your district that uh, that we haven't uh, discussed here today? I, I think that mostly people in my district are concerned about economic issues right now. And um, also, we recently had um, the vaping law in Indiana, which basically is another corporatism. We had um, a bunch of Indiana senators and get a lot of money from a security firm up in Tippecanoe County. And um, suddenly, we basically shut down half of the vaping industry in Indiana. So because they were not – they were not approved. They had to go through this specific security firm in their vaping industry in order to operate in the state of Indiana. So that shut down half of them. And I think that that's, uh, in fact, my opponent voted for that bill. And um, there's your um, free market Republican right there voting to shut down half of uh, the vaping industry. Yeah, there's um, a difference. And what about um, (laughs) one other thing I just thought of is – the TPP, which if people don't know is a you know the trade deal, kind of similar to NAFTA mm-hmm. but different countries. What is your position at this point in time on you know should the TPP be passed as how we know it? it absolutely not. I mean, what do we know about it? No one's allowed to read it. I, I think it's appalling that they're going to vote through a, a law that the American people can't read. And I think that that's the very definition of tax without representation. Interesting. And and have you heard um, Democrats, uh, you know, um, support? I mean, I, I know you already probably have the Libertarians. Um, what about uh, what kind of support are you getting? Uh, Republicans, Democrats, Independents? I, I'm getting an overwhelming amount of support from Democrats and also independents and definitely a lot of Republicans who are just set up with the system. And I definitely see them kind of leaning more towards libertarianism lately, and I hope to see a lot more of that. Great. And any other upcoming events, Pepper, before we end the interview today? Yes, I'm actually doing a candidate forum here coming up pretty soon in Columbia City, and then I'm also going to be on the news on uh, the end of October, the 29th or the 30th, I believe, and I'll be on the morning news for an hour, for, I believe an hour, I'm not sure. Right, and for people listening, you'll be able to um, re-listen to this interview at libertarianprogressive.com. Uh, this interview we've been doing with Pepper Snyder, Libertarian candidate for the U.S. House of Representatives, District Number Three in Indiana. She's going to be on the ballots, um, and the only uh, other option, basically, besides a Republican, there's a Democrat, but almost forfeited. So, a real interesting race here in U.S. politics this year. Um, uh, well, any other uh, final words of wisdom for our audience, Pepper? And we appreciate your time today to uh, share with our audience uh, what's happening in your state. I would just like to rehash over and over again that if you want something different, then you've got to start voting different. And and please uh, contact us and let us know if there is a debate um, ever going to happen in your area before November 8th. We'd be really interested in doing that, and we'll be, do an update to this interview and, and, and put a link to that. So uh, just let us know about that. But, well, thank Absolutely. you so much. for. We appreciate it, and I hope you have a nice thank evening, you. and good luck in your campaign. Thanks for taking the time. Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Bye-bye. Man.